Alright, welcome to a, another tutorial in Maya. This one is part two of uh, the sticky blob series. You might want to go back and catch part one uh, where we set all these blobs up and whatnot. So this is kind of part two about fine-tuning some of these particles. Now here's what I've got going on. I'm going to do a, a quick rundown. Um, basically I've animated this already and what you're seeing here is just some sticky blobs that have like smashed into some titling there and then they do their thing so this is just a quick render just to show you the concept but what we need to do now is we need to fine-tune these and I didn't really get a chance to do that in the first tutorial so let's go and take a look at fine-tuning our sticky blobs okay so I'm gonna move this out of the way as you can see here, here's the scene I've got going, and I'm going to just start up my camera here and uh, start the animation. So let me go back here to the beginning. I've animated a camera to just kind of zoom in here, and it uh, you know, basically just shows you the effect. But um, you know, with these sticky blobs, what you see isn't always what you get, um, especially in the viewport. So we need to kind of fine tune this with our, uh, with our render window. So I'm going to bring up my render view right now. And uh, I've got mine set on Maya software. You might want to set yours on Maya software as well. Um, remember, they are computationally expensive. So, you know, if you have a slow computer, get ready to either have Maya crash or, you know, have some slower render times. But for the most part, these things render out pretty quick. So, you know, essentially, I'm just rendering a small version. Here's what it looks like. And uh, it looks pretty cool. I'm going to show you kind of how the process to fine tune this and um, a way to kind of work with it so that it doesn't frustrate you. Um, I'm going to go back here and come into my uh, perspective view and uh, take a look at the scene from out here. As you can see, I've got a uh, ambient light sort of out here, just some basic text, and then our blobby particles. And um, I do have a hidden plane underneath here. Um, if you come down, I can pull up my outliner and uh, show you that plane. Um, you're going to want to set yours up kind of the same way. Um, there's my plane. If I come in here to my tab section, I can kind of go to my plane shape and my object display right now. I have that plane turned off because we really don't want to see it. It's just affecting the blobs. So um, for the time being, I'm going to leave that on and we're going to take a look at the fine tuning adjustments for these blobby particles. All right. So let's come in here and um, let's select our particles first. And uh, I'm just going to click off of there. Yeah, click off of there. We'll get the particles called up here. Um, I think believe they're particle one. So there's my properties for particle one, and you can see that they're part of this geo connector, and that my re resilience is set at oh, about 7.743. Okay. So let's play with the let's play with the the, the blobby particles to start with. I'm going to come over here and come into my particle shape. And remember, in, underneath your particle shape, you're going to have render attributes which show you basically the radius and the threshold. And these two are really the most important when you're playing with, um, you know, setting your blobby type, uh, your blobby surface to get it to kind of way, react the way you want. And I'm going to show you that real quick. I'm going to bring this out of the way. And let's go back to the beginning of the animation back here. And as you notice, um, I've got these things falling down. And it has a pretty wide radius on it right now. Okay, um, I'm going to take that radius down to say, oh, let's just take it all the way down. And let's take a look and see what it looks like. You'll notice that when this stuff falls, it looks more like balls. Um, you know, it just looks like particle balls. Um, they stick together and they look kind of blobby. I'll do a quick render view. Let's bring that over here. And that's kind of what it looks like now. Um, I'm going to switch my um, preferences down here. I'm going to sort of come back to my 640 by 480 size. That'll help us render a little faster. And um, let's take another render. Yeah, all right. We'll move that down a little bit. So there you go. Now, watch what happens when I pull that uh, radius up. I'm going to come over here and we're going to pull our radius way up. And I'm going to bring this back here and we'll do another drop down. As you can see, they have a little more shape to them and what we'll do is I'll do a quick render there and you, you'll notice how they start to blend together a little bit more the larger you make your radius um, they kind of blob together a little bit more so that's kind of the, the the point of fine-tuning your radius first okay now 
I'm going to get rid of this for a second and we'll play through a little bit further into the animation. I'm going to take my threshold up a bit and I'm actually going to surpass this this point. I'm going to go to 5.963 so my threshold is actually uh, surpassing my radius. It's a little bit bigger and watch what happens. I'm going to bring the render view over here and I'm going to hit render and a lot of times it, it'll it'll stiffen up like that to almost nothing although in the render view it looks like they're they're you know all over the place so just something to know um, so threshold is sort of like oh the cohesive binding of it all I guess I'm gonna push this threshold way up and we'll do another render view and there it is and sometimes when you you get to a threshold that's too high uh, your whole object may disappear altogether so just something to be aware of. I'm going to bring this threshold back down. Just give it, just give it a little bit in there. And um, let's go back here. Let's rewind to the beginning of the animation. I'm going to bring my uh, radius up a bit more. And let's take a play. And there it goes. Okay, so we got big blobs. Now, if I were to take a render view on here, we're going to get something that looks a lot different. Yeah, see we got some stuff that's splitting apart there, but really it's a matter of sort of fine-tuning this radius. I might bring it down a little bit, might bring my threshold up a little bit. Um, let's just uh, hit play in the viewport there, and let's take another render. Okay, so you can see where they're starting to break up a little bit more. Um, we could keep playing around with that, maybe bring our threshold down, and it's really just a matter of finding a finding a balance you know sometimes you can play around with your threshold and your radius without having to come back and play into the you know the the timeline there so let's bring our threshold down just a little bit more and we'll take another render and you'll see they're busting apart even more so the more you bring this threshold up I'm gonna bring that threshold up the more they start to clump together alright so there you go so that's the concept there. You got to kind of play around with these quite a bit and bring your radius up enough and then adjust your threshold and get just what you like. And there you go. Okay, so on to step two. Let's look at this, this plane right here. And if you come up to your geo connector in the plane, you can see where I have my resilience. Um, this is bounciness, so how much bounce is involved. And um, they bounce off that plane pretty good. Watch what happens though if I bring this down, this resilience all the way down here. Um, let's come back here. Now we'll restart. Sometimes it's good to restart the animation when you make a big change like that. Okay, so now you can see where the bounce, without having much resilience, it just sort of locks this, this in place. And my friction is set all the way up. So it basically isn't going anywhere. All right. So if I were to come back here, we'll do a render view of that. And you can see where, you know, it, it, it doesn't really look too good because it's just a big, you know, kind of a square blob. But that's cool too. Anyway, just something to be aware of. Now watch this. I'm going to bring the, uh, the friction down on this plane because this plane is where things are bouncing off of. So if we want them to slide off, I'm just going to bring my friction almost all the way down to, to nothing. We will bring it down to nothing. In this case, I want to start with a, a replay here. And now we can see where, you know, things start sliding around a little bit faster. We still have this down here, but, you know, essentially it's, it's doing its thing. So we'll go ahead and keep this resilience. I think what we'll do is pump the resilience up a little bit and bring the friction back a little bit. And I'll go ahead, and in this case, um, sometimes we'll start again. Um, usually with the other um, things you can adjust, like your radius, um, you can interactively use. But Okay, so now you can see, let's zoom in here, and let's actually come back here to the beginning and take a, a look. We'll stop kind of right when it hits, and we'll look and see what that looks like. I'll take a render, and there's what I get in my render view. See, I, I still have sort of a a pattern there that I don't like because uh, it should be a little more spread out so you know it's just a matter of messing around with your friction now um, you might want to go to your blobby particles as well and look at what your resilience and your friction is there here I've got it set to one 
you know you can always go a little higher if you want I'll set that to a 2 okay and let's bring it all the way back to the beginning okay and this is a point where you know Maya starts to say oh man I got a lot to think about now so you know the more you start getting the more extreme yeah the more uh, the more it takes to render this stuff and Maya has to work really hard so anyway okay so that's about it um, just wanted you to see kinda how that works and um, let's go back to the beginning and that you know essentially you should be able to build an animation that looks something like this and then it's just a matter of using your imagination to come up with uh, different ways to use this uh, blobby surface material so it's pretty much it um, I've seen some really creative stuff done with it and um, this is just sort of the beginning This sort of gives you an idea how to fine-tune this stuff so that's blobby particles okay so I hope you learned something on this and um, you know stay with it and uh, read a book <laughs> every day and uh, thanks for watching talk to you soon